A young man was at the end of his rope. He was worn out, he was stressed, and seeing no way out, he turned to the Lord in prayer, saying, Lord, I can't go on. My cross is too heavy to bear. The Lord replied, My son, if you can't bear its weight, just set your cross inside this room, then pick up any cross you wish. The man was filled with relief and said, Thank you, Lord. Upon entering the room, he set down his cross and he looked around. He saw a lot of crosses, some so large that the tops weren't even visible. Then he spotted a tiny cross leaning against a far wall. He said, I'd like that one, Lord. And the Lord replied, My son, that's the cross you just brought in. I think the first time I heard that joke was at a men's morning of spirituality. (laughs) But we all have crosses, brothers and sisters, and to us they may seem big, and they are big, and we may complain, but it's important to remember that there's always someone who has a bigger cross than us, and like the saints, they may carry it without complaint. And it's easy to complain when suffering, trial, and difficulties come our way. Uh, It's easy to forget that the cross is a blessing. But the funny thing is, I will admit, is that that's a lot easier said when we're not suffering. Because there's nothing pleasant about suffering. But we all suffer. And rather than wasting these crosses that come our way, Jesus teaches us to make the most of them. Not to escape them, but to embrace them. In our gospel, he starts by saying, If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now, for some, this may be easier than others, especially if you have a bad relationship with your family. Um, It's really easy to hate them. But this isn't quite what our Lord's getting at. Uh, What he's trying to say is that... uh, If our relatives, those closest to us, those who we have a natural love for, if they're given more importance than God in our life, then we're not worthy to be his disciples. It's not that our relationships with them are bad, but God's supposed to come first in our lives. We love God, and then we love others for the sake of God. But he doesn't just stop with our families. He goes on to say that if we don't hate our very lives then we're not worthy to be his disciples. Now, I'm sure if we had a brainstorming session, we could come up with a lot of reasons why people hate themselves. Um, It could be they're stuck in sin and they think they're worthless. It could be an image complex. They think they're too skinny or too, too fat. Or they don't look as pretty as the people on TV. But like with our family, Jesus's words here, they can be misinterpreted. God doesn't want us to hate ourselves or our appearance, but he wants our lives to be properly ordered. Like the martyrs in the early church, God and his will has to be more important than our own lives. And we always have to be ready to give up our lives and our ways of thinking and doing things for the truth. Now, there's no mistake that our Lord mentions the cross after all of this. The cross, it's countercultural. It tells us that life isn't meant, uh, the meaning for life isn't really about being comfortable. We're not here for vac- vacation or to enjoy and indulge in everything, but we're pilgrims passing through. This is a time of testing and purification as we make our way to heaven. And the Christian life, it's meant to be like the cross, it's meant to be countercultural. It, we're meant to embrace our crosses rather than run and hide from them. And that's something that's very hard to do today. Um, and the reason for that is because we're flooded with so many ideas. We get pressure from others that may convince us to give in to certain ideologies of the day to go along with it or be tolerant. And that's a lot easier than standing up for the truth. But as Christians, one of our crosses is to do just this, to always seek the truth, uh, not to trust ourselves and our own feelings, but discern the truth so that we're sure we're following God rather than ourselves or someone else. And the gift of wisdom is something that can help us do this. 
our first reading, it was from the Book of Wisdom. And at this point, King Solomon, he has become king of Israel. And he knows that in order to govern his kingdom well, he needs the gift of wisdom. And the reason for this is because, as we heard in our first reading, we can't know the counsels of God or conceive what he intends. We're left in darkness without the wisdom of God. Now, wisdom, it's a, it's a special grace. As a gift of the Holy Spirit, it allows us to see God at work in our lives. It kind of gives us a, a bird's eye view, which helps us to govern our lives according to his will. It's a gift that also helps us to see the deeper meaning in things, that our crosses and sufferings, whether little or big, if we have the right attitude about them, they can help us become great saints. Uh, Fulton Sheen, he once uh, spoke about the cross of sickness, and he said that, Then there is the cross of sickness, which has a divine purpose. Resignation to this particular kind of cross is one of the very highest forms of prayer. Unfortunately, the sick generally want to be doing something else other than the thing that God wants them to do. The tragedy of this world is not so much the pain in it. The tragedy is that so much of it is wasted. There will be a bright jewel of merit for those who suffer in this world, because we live in a world where position is determined economically. We forget that in God's world, the royalty are those who do his will. And the way we do this, brothers and sisters, is bearing our crosses, uh, bearing those sufferings and difficulties with patience. We follow our Lord. He's the one that, uh, that really paved the way for us. He showed us how to do this by carrying his cross, and he teaches us that he doesn't just leave us to carry our crosses on our own, but he helps us to carry, carry those crosses if we turn to him and we ask for his help. Now, I don't remember which saint said it, but there was one saint who, uh, who was speaking about suffering, and they said that when we get to heaven and see the great love that God has for us, we'll wish that we suffered more in this life, that we didn't try to escape our crosses, because the little crosses we bear now, they're only momentary. It's just in this brief life. But if we bear them with patience and love, then we'll earn everlasting merit, and all of those crosses will assure us of a place for all eternity next to the heart of our Lord in heaven. And so, brothers and sisters, just turn to our Lord, learn from his example, and bear your crosses as he did with patience and with love.